edition of has lecture series i hope you are all doing well uh, so for today we will be discussing about drugs and placenta or in other terms uh, your it is also called as pharmacology of placenta or you know we are just talking in terms of placental transfer of drugs okay so whatever is the thing uh, the summary of all these things remain the same uh, as you all know drugs are teratogenic agents agents in the sense teratogenic agents in the sense uh, they can cause a lot of problems uh, onto the growing fetus so they can bring in a lot of anomalies congenital problems and so on so if you're new to this channel please watch my videos on adverse drug reactions to know more on teratogenicity anyway so we do not want drugs to cross through the placenta and reach the fetus uh, in most of the conditions and uh, that's the reason that we uh, need to be very careful when we prescribe drugs to pregnant ladies so we require to be uh, bit more rational on what we prescribe especially uh, during pregnancy because not all drugs are uh, safe okay so we talk about a lot of factors um, uh, which can increase or decrease the placental transfer of drugs now as i go along i'll be giving you examples so just try to concentrate and try to remember those examples which might bring in some clinical significance to you uh, in your practice later on okay so anyway so uh, factors which affect drug transfer across the placenta the first thing is size of a drug molecule okay so bigger the size of a drug molecule definitely it cannot cross the fence okay because placenta is like a fence so it won't allow the bigger drug molecule to pass through the fence so uh, bigger the size less are the chances that a drug molecule can reach the fetus examples of that uh, would be you know drug molecules like heparin or insulin with high molecular size and it becomes difficult for a drug molecule to cross uh, the placenta especially with molecular weight uh, more than 1000 dietons but if you have a, a drug molecule which is smaller in size definitely it can cross the placenta very easily um, uh, okay so the next uh, uh, thing or uh, the factor which affects transfer would be charge on a drug molecule definitely uh, non ionized drugs uh, or drugs with no charge on them can cross the placenta very easily as compared to the drugs with charge on them or which are ionized so in that would be you know um, uh, depolarizing muscle blockers like succinylcholine which has a charge on it so it will be difficult for a drug molecule to cross the placenta because of the charge on it because any charge it will create a problem when it has to cross the fence right so yeah so it, it is important factor that a drug is unionized to cross the placenta uh, the third thing would be plasma protein binding of drugs now as you all know drugs are bound to plasma proteins inside uh, the body inside the vascular compartment uh, now again if you're new to my channel go and watch my session on plasma protein binding uh, but anyway i hope you know what is plasma protein binding so if the drug is bound to plasma protein binding it's of no use because it's not something which is active drug right so we want a free drug to exist so that it can have some impact and can carry out its duties so plasma protein binding higher the plasma protein binding less is the chances of its transfer across the placenta whereas free drugs uh, have the liberty to cross the placental barrier if all other requirements suit in their terms so uh, it, it, it's 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 uh, it's the way things work in the body uh, lipophilicity that is uh, uh, how much is the drug molecule lipid loving okay so what is the solubility of a drug molecule in lipids okay in fats so definitely if the drug molecule is lipophilic that is it loves lipids or is fat soluble it can cross the placenta very easily but uh, you do not want the drug molecule to be extremely lipophilic okay you do not want it to be extremely lipophilic you want it to be mild to moderate because extreme lipophilicity and a drug molecule will accumulate within placenta okay so examples of that would be sufentanil anesthetic drug which can just accumulate within the placenta so that also is a worry because uh, you do not want it to be extremely lipophilic 
uh, you want it to be either mild to moderate if at all you want the drug molecule to pass from one side to other side otherwise if it's not lipophilic if it's hydrophobic hydrophilic not phobic hydrophilic if it is water loving it may not be able to cross the placental barrier but that's just one of the things other things also need to be taken into consideration if you talk of transfer of drug molecules across the placenta now uh, dr uh, drug metabolism you know all organs of a body have the um, uh, potential to metabolize drugs okay uh, again if you're new to my channel watch my video on uh, drug metabolism but you should all know that all organs of a body have the ability to metabolize drugs okay it's not just the liver that we're talking of uh, liver liver definitely will uh, be you know like 99 percent of the drug molecules get metabolized within um, the liver but apart from that there would be all other organs which can truly participate in metabolism so does with placenta so placenta also has the ability to metabolize drugs and um, especially by plasma what is called as a pl uh, esterases that exist which can metabolize drugs so uh, you should be knowing about that so some drugs might be metabolized to higher extent within the placenta some drugs will be will be just minimally metabolized by the placenta whatever it might be but uh, it, it's 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 an organ which uh, it's a part which can uh, really metabolize drugs and can decrease uh, the amount of drug reaching on to the fetus okay so that is that is one one thing that you need to know now uh, we talked about ionize, ionization now that also depends upon uh, the ph and uh, pka of a drug molecule so uh, drugs with pka near to around 7.4 uh, will exist in uh, what i call as a, a minimal non-ionized states uh, and are associated with high placental transfers okay but with pka more than 7.4 uh, then maybe you know there is a issue with that so need to know about that so it does affect the placental transfer of drugs uh, now uh, you know drugs when they reach the fetus there would be intake or i should say intake or uptake whatever it might be there should there there will be some amount of drug which be taken up by the fetus uh, and um, there would be something called as iron trapping inside the fetus okay so normal drugs also do get iron trapped within the fetus even though their ph pk everything remains to be on to the normal side but they do get iron trapped within the uh, fetus so that is one thing that uh, really one needs to take into consideration uh, before uh, you give any kind of a drug to uh, a pregnant lady uh, you can use drugs along with vasoconstrictors uh, which can increase their amount of uh, life within the body for example uh, you know adrenaline or epinephrine whatever you call it as given with some other drugs uh, local anesthetics especially can slow their absorption and can uh, increase their chances of living in the body for a long time and they can cause a lot of problems so uh, try to be uh, sure whether you want to use a vasoconstrictor or not uh, with certain drugs a uh, few drugs have the ability to stimulate uh, the fetus okay so for example drugs like epitrine uh, which can stimulate the metabolism of fetus once it crosses uh, onto the placenta and reach the fetus so it can bring about a lot of problems uh, so uh, try to be uh, sure that your drug is not a stimulant to the fetus and so on so these were all the factors uh, which can affect uh, the transfer of drug molecules uh, across uh, the placenta and now just to give you a brief on uh, i don't have a slide on that purposefully didn't put it but anyway uh, there are some drugs which do not cross placenta so examples for that as i said to you uh, would be uh, insulin heparin um, then what is there uh, uh, glycopyrrolate uh, so so few drugs which do not cross on to the placenta then there will be some drugs which are usually safe Okay, so if you're using morphine, okay, morphine is a drug which can cross the placenta and cause a respiratory depression. But uh, morphine can generate fentanyl, which is given in low doses, um, is really to say, 
uh, seem to be safe or if you're giving it uh, by epidural route then also it becomes very safe in child uh, then uh, beta blockers especially uh, like propofol might be safe to give in uh, if you're told you want to give them in uh, uh, pregnancy uh, so uh, apart from that a few anesthetic agents would uh, which are safe would be thiopentone so that is usually considered to be safe in pregnancy uh, uh, there are some drugs which are potentially dangerous out of that why I suggested to be morphine or fentanyl uh, fentanyl of course in high doses would be dangerous um, then would be drugs like you know uh, benzodiazepines sedative agents ephedrine which increases metabolism we just discussed about that and local anesthetics uh, and a few other drugs which can be uh, potentially dangerous it may not be dangerous to all the children but you need to be aware that this can cause a lot of problems to an individual so uh, that was my quick analysis on uh, drugs and placental transfer I hope you like this session, a very short session, uh, but just to give you an insight on um, uh, that uh, that these type of things also exist as far as clinical pharmacology is concerned. Uh, thank you. Do subscribe to my channel. Bye.